Thanks, Manolis. Welcome, everyone, to my presentation. What does it mean for a machine to understand a data set? Well, from a supervised learning standpoint, we could say, well, it means to generalize to unseen test cases. But this does not necessarily require a deep understanding of the data. Um, so as an example, the texture bias of CNN classifiers um, just ignore uh, the shape and focus entirely on texture, while for humans it's actually quite important um, to uh, use the shape as a cue for recognition. So what could be an alternative? An alternative, an alternative could be to require that a machine learning model is able to generate new data. This does not allow for shortcut learning as all relationships must be modeled, all the relationships in the data. Hence, generative models must develop a richer understanding compared to supervised learning models. And moreover, unsupervised learning is arguably closer to how humans learn. Generative models also have many practical applications. Many tasks are uh, ill-posed, for example, denoising and reconstruction tasks. And conditional generative models can incorporate this uncertainty. Um, furthermore, having a flexible model of a data set can be useful for downstream tasks. For example, having access to a low-dimensional 3D representation can be useful for fitting a 3D model to an image or as an input to other tasks. And generative models can also be used to augment data for supervised learning. For example, augment uh, the training distribution with additional synthetic data. In this talk, I want to show three recent works from my group. Um, so the first one is on generating images, StyleGAN XL. And then we move to 3D, VoxGraph for fast 3D aware image synthesis. And finally, towards generating not only static shapes and appearances, but also um, humans in motion, generative neural avatars. But I will start in the 2D domain with StyleGAN XL. And this is joint work with my PhD students, Axel Sauer, Katja Schwarz. We know that uh, generative models have, um, in particular generative models for images, have progressed substantially over the last five years. In particular, StyleGAN is able to synthesize high fidelity portraits, such as shown here on the left. Via image editing techniques, such as scan inversion, we can also use these models effectively as a graphics engine from a data-centric perspective. Here are some examples where the expression of the face or the eyes have been altered. While StyleGAN works well on structured data, such as faces, it really struggles with unstructured data like ImageNet with its 1,000 categories, and even within a single class, there's much more variation in ImageNet compared to the class of faces. But we also want to learn generative models on unstructured data like ImageNet. And that's the goal of StyleGAN XL. So if we naively train StyleGAN, a state-of-the-art StyleGAN model on ImageNet, this does not yield very good results. So here you can see some examples for producing images, for example, for a golden retriever or boat house here. We propose several changes to both the architecture and training to StyleGAN to lift StyleGAN to produce reasonable results also on datasets as large and diverse as ImageNet. And this is what we call StyleGAN XL. So here on the right, you can see some results on some of the randomly picked categories of the ImageNet dataset. So let's first look into how StyleGAN works. StyleGAN um, has a mapping network, GM, that takes a latent as input and produces a style code, W, which modulates the actual synthesis network, GS, that produces an image. And then we have a discriminator, which is also a convolutional neural network that's trained jointly with the generator in order to determine if this image is coming from the real data distribution or is a artificially generated image. And we train this using the standard um, two-player game objective of GANs. The first modification that we introduced to make StyleGAN work for ImageNet style datasets is to use pre-trained feature networks, like in our earlier work, Projected GANs, where we replace this vanilla convolutional network for the discriminator with a pre-trained convolutional network, like a 
classification network trained on ImageNet that produces feature maps, and we discriminate those feature maps. We also add cross-channel mixing and cross-scale mixing um, to mix these channels appropriately, which is important for good performance, just like in projected GAN. This improves image quality, sample efficiency, and also convergence speed significantly. The second modification we do is we found that actually vision transformers are quite complementary in terms of the architecture to classical CNN discriminators. So we have a CNN discriminator branch and a vision transformer branch, but both in this projected feature regime. And so we exploit the complementary nature of these, these two. The second thing we introduce is class conditioning. ImageNet is very diverse, but each sample comes with a class label. Conditioning on the class label is essential to control the class and improve performance. Um, so there's a screen coming up. OK, I hope it works again. <laughs> so despite the class conditioning, note that the intra-class variation is still high. right? Uh, so it's still a challenging task, but it makes the modeling task much easier to have this class conditioning. How do we do this? Well, here's the picture from before. And so what we do as the third modification is add this class conditioning here. Um, but instead of randomly initializing the class embeddings, we use pre-trained class embeddings from an ImageNet classifier, which also makes optimization easier again. So we first have a standard ImageNet model that produces these embeddings. And this is what we initialize to learn these embeddings jointly. And we have this both for the generator and for the discriminator. The fourth modification that we do to StyleGAN is to revisit the old idea, the old StyleGAN idea. There's multiple variants of StyleGAN, as you know, right? StyleGAN 1, 2, 3, um, which is introduced in the earlier versions of StyleGAN called progressive growing, which is to gradually add layers during training to both the generator and the discriminator, which leads to more stable training. We start at a coarse resolution and then slowly blend in new layers to go to higher resolutions. Actually, this progressive growing strategy had been discarded in later StyleGAN architectures due to this texture sticking out effect, as we can see here. Um, but the root cause for this has actually been determined to be not the progressive growing, but to be um, aliasing, which has been combated in StyleGAN 3. So that's why we revisit progressive growing together with these newly added techniques for, um, that have been introduced in StyleGAN 3, now in StyleGAN XL, XL jointly. So this is what we do. We train on images with, with progressively increasing resolution. And actually, it turns out that we have to train, we have to spend most of our training time at the low resolutions. Like adding training, like adding higher resolutions later on is, is very fast, actually. So we spend most of the training time at the low resolution. When changing the resolution, we discard the critically sampled layers to avoid aliasing, just following StyleGAN free. And then what we also do is we freeze the earlier stages, which, le which leads to fast and stable training. So we only update the green blocks here. When we go to um, higher and higher resolutions, we freeze more and more of these early layers. And finally, what we add is classifier guidance. Um, inspired by recent diffusion models, which uh, produce great results um, using classifier guidance, we use the same trick here uh, adapted to the style gun um, architecture. The classifier guidance in diffusion models modifies each diffusion step by adding gradients of a pre-trained classifier um, to help optimization. And this leads to significant improved image quality. So we modify this now and adapt it here to StyleGAN. And this is shown here. What we do is we pass the generated image here um, through a lightweight pre-trained classifier, in our case, a date small classifier here that has been pre-trained. And because we know the class labels, right, we can just minimize the cross entropy loss on these class labels, on these predicted class labels. And this gives us an additional gradient here for updating the generator. And now these five modifications together give us good results and uh, the, the stability um, required for, tr um, for optimizing this two player game to lead to good results on data sets as diverse as ImageNet. And here's some results. What you can see here is that we obtain high image fidelity and sample diversity, um, which outperforms even some of the most advanced diffusion models. But in contrast, it trains much faster than diffusion models and also inferences much faster than diffusion models. And with this progressive growing strategy, we can scale this up to more than one megapixel resolution. It also allows for image inversion or editing in diverse domains, because we now have a model that um, operates on the whole 
um, space of ImageNet images. So here's an example of image inversion. On the left, you can see the source image. And here on the right, you can see the inverted image, which looks very similar to the source image. And it looks much closer to the source image than the inverted image from BigGAN, which was one of the earlier models that worked on ImageNet, um, but doesn't produce the same fidelity as StyleGAN XL. Here at the bottom, you can see the same for a beer, um, where StyleGAN XL fits the bear better than uh, the BigGAN model. We can also use language-based editing techniques, such as StyleMC, in combination with StyleGAN XL. So here we have an input image and we, we modify that image into a latent dimension that was found through StyleMC for the prompts no stripes, so we remove the stripes, or big eyes, so we make the eyes bigger, or stormy weather here in the last row. StyleGAN XL, of course, does not only allow to generate realistic samples on ImageNet. StyleGAN XL also achieves state-of-the-art performance on structured data like FFHQ, which we can see here. FFHQ is a um, much easier data set in some sense because it's much more, much more structured. So our model also applies to that data set. OK, so let's now move from uh, progress in 2D generative modeling to 3D generative modeling. And I want to start with BoxGraph. This is joint work with Katja Schwarz, Michael Niemeyer, and Yi Liao. The goal in uh, 3D aware generative models is to synthesize images with explicit control over camera, pose, and potentially other scene properties like object shape and appearance, but to train these models only from unstructured 2D image collections. So here's a simple picture of such a GAN or generator where we sample a latent from a standard distribution and they push this through the 3D generator. This gives us a 3D reconstruction that we render into an image and these images we compare to one of our dataset images. And one of the first models we, we, we did in this regime was called Graph Generative Radiance Fields, which built on NERF, basically built a 3D aware generative model for NERF. So this model was quite nice. It produced reasonable results, um, and it was trained only on unstructured 2D image collections. But it was slow to render because it required a query to a coordinate-based MLP with many layers for every sample along each camera ray to produce the final image. Faster rendering can be achieved through neural rendering. So we can render a low-resolution 2D feature map uh, which, of course, then requires less queries to the 3D space. This has, for example, been done in StyleNerf or in Giraffe. And then we can apply a standard 2D upsampler to get the 2D image at high resolution. This is a compact representation and leads to fast rendering, but it impairs consistency, 3D consistency, and also we only obtain lower resolution geometry. Another alternative is to use a sparse 3D representation, as done in Gram, for example, recently, where they use a manifold representation where the manifold is jointly learned with the 3D generative model, um, which leads to 3D consistency and efficient rendering. But also, when you rotate the object, um, the layering artifacts become visible in the reconstruction, in the rendered image. So here, what we do in BoxGraph is to revisit the old idea of voxels. We're basically inspired by Instance NGP, which revisited the idea of voxels for um, radiance fields modeling and demonstrated that nerve level quality can even be surpassed with a voxel representation. And so we wanted to revisit this idea here as well. So what we do is we generate the full object on a sparse voxel grid using a sparse convolutional 3D generator. Um, and uh, therefore, our method only requires a single forward pass to generate a full 3D scene, which then allows for efficient rendering from arbitrary viewpoints. Right? So we can generate the scene in maybe 100 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds, but then we can render an image into any viewpoint in just a few milliseconds, maybe five milliseconds. By design, this method is 3D consistent. It has, uh, well, efficient rendering time and uh, leads to high resolution geometry. Here's a little bit more detail about this method. We push the pose and the latent through a generator that produces this sparse voxel grid, where in each voxel we store color and density that can be then 
um, rendered um, like a nerf to an image. And what we do in addition is we use a separate model, a 2D model for the background to model the background. So our model automatically learns to disentangle the foreground from the background. Um, and then we alpha composite this background together with the foreground to yield the final image that is then compared by the discriminator to images from the to the images from the data set. We also use progressive growing as in the previous project um, to um, consecutively attain higher and higher resolutions. What we do here is that when we go from a lower to a higher resolution is that we prune voxels to um, uh, to yield a sparse representation. So for example, the red voxels here are occluded, so we prune them. And also the black voxels here we prune because we have low density and the likelihood of contributing to the color value, the rendered color value is small. So we prune them away. To help pruning, we also add an additional loss function um, to make the representation more sparse than it would be um, to in induce this ad additional inductive bias here. And what we do is we um, reduce the variance of the depth. We volume render the expected depth c hat, and then we compute the variance of c hat, which is of course differentiable. Um, and then we optimize a loss that is based on the variance and has some additional um, margin tau here. So this defines basically the sharpness of the surface. Here are some results. First, we can see results from style nerve. StyleNerve's powerful neural renderer can introduce multi-view inconsistency like appearing faces or moving strands of hair, as you can see here in these highlighted regions. So this is not a 3D consistent model. Gram, on the other hand, is 3D consistent, but the manifold representation becomes visible as layered artifacts. Finally, at the bottom, you can see our results, which also have some, some artifacts in the background, for example, but it is pretty consistent by design and natural leads to more multi-view consistent results. Here are some more results of our method. At the bottom, you can see the 3D voxel grid, which was automatically uh, constructed by our method, and on the top, the rendered image corresponding to that. It works for faces, it works for cats as well, and also for other objects. Here we can see how our model automatically learns to disentangle the foreground from the background. At inference time, we can then remove the background simply by ignoring it when rendering it. And here are some results on latent space interpolation where you can see how the object identity slowly transitions between different people. Now, let me take the remaining few minutes to present to you gDNA, which goes from static, generating static 3D objects to animated dynamic 3D um, characters. And it's joint work with Xu, Jia, Jinlong, Michael, and Otmar. So it's a collaboration of University of Tübingen, Max Planck in Tübingen, and ETH Zurich. The goal of GDNA is to generate 3D humans with diverse shapes, styles, and poses, but to learn this from unrigged 3D scans without correspondences or skinning supervision. Our model uses an implicit 3D shape representation in canonical space that is conditioned on some latents for latent detail and latent shape code. It also has a differentiable forward skinning model, like SNARF, for reposing the canonical model into post space. And then we use a 3D reconstruction loss in 3D post space and a 2D adversarial loss in um, rendered normal space for reconstructing fine details. We learned this model in an auto decoding framework from just few post scans per subject, but across many different sub subjects in our data set. Because we use an auto decoding framework, um, we retrospectively fit a, um, a probabilistic distribution to the latent space in order to be able to sample from it. So here are some results. These are random samples from of clothed human shapes generated by GDNA. And as you can see, um, both the gender and also the shape 
varies significantly. We can now also model the individual factors that have been disentangled by our model. Um, so we can visualize them individually. So here you see, for example, how the shape changes. And these are the, the this is the latent for details, which modifies the little wrinkles on, on the cloth, for example. This is uh, the pose variable, which allows us to animate the character. And this is the size variable, which allows us to modify the size of the character. And finally, we can, of course, also interpolate between different characters and modify multiple of these latent factors at once. That's all for today. Let me briefly summarize. Um, I presented Stargan XL, which is a model for a scaling Stargan to ImageNet. Then I moved on to VoxGraph, a voxel-based 3D-aware generative model. And finally presented GDNA, which is a model for learning animatable avatars from raw 3D scans. All our code is available. So if you want to try out our models, feel free. Um, I put the link to the project pages here, and I'm looking forward to your questions now. Thank you.